May God be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. Uh, wonderful as I look out and see faces here at church and welcome to you who are online as well. This is the second Sunday of Lent and um, I don't know if you just see this pastor pew multiplying every week. We've gone from one to two and now we have three so glad Sherry Larson is our pastoral intern. She's going to graduate from Luther Seminary in June, and we're doing a shared internship with Spirit of Joy in Buffalo. And um, Sherry, it's so great to have you here, and your husband, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Good morning to you. Uh, so great to have you here as well. And then uh, you are in for a treat in terms of music today. I would like to introduce you to Blake Pohl, and his wife, Abby, is with us. Um, Blake is at the organ, at the piano, and then Karen Anderson, obviously, and Rachel Olson, a junior at Armstrong, is going to be here to play her cello. So uh, we just take all these creative forces and the gifts around us, and as they come together under the leadership of Angela, we're really looking forward to that. So uh, the season of Lent, these 40 days before Easter, and one of the things we are doing here at Mount Olivet is experiencing this prayer of loving kindness. It's actually um, a chant or a canticle, and uh, we started last week, and it's a prayer, and uh, we pray for peace and wholeness for all to be well, and we start with ourselves, and then we pivot and think about someone either known or unknown, and pray that they are whole and well. And then we take a final pivot to the world. And in all these unsettled times with everything that's going on, especially with uh, decisiveness and conflict, uh, to really be praying for someone who you don't agree with, um, who is on the other side of a political spectrum or um, someone in need of forgiveness, whatever that is. Uh, just to really open ourselves up to God's mercy and the wideness of what this is. And so uh, today, Joy is going to lead us. Each and every week we have uh, a musician guiding us through that and look forward to that time together. So we begin with our call to worship. Jesus weeps for us because we do not know the things that make for peace. The Holy Spirit blows among us, prompting us to recognize God among us. The Creator waits with outstretched wings, inviting us to rest in the warmth of her embrace. Let us gather near the divine heartbeat. Let us open our eyes to God and set our feet on the path of peace. Be filled with 
confess together, patient God, we recognize how much we need you for life itself. But how, how easily, easily we leave, leave your side, O oh God, for a for place, place far away. away. How, how blind we are in our darkness. darkness. How closed our eyes to our, our sins. sins. Strengthen, Strengthen our spirits, O oh God. God. Create our, our hearts anew. For, for we cannot, cannot make the journey home alone. Guide us to your welcoming arms, to the music and, and the dancing, dancing for, for we are easily lost, and, and only, only you can find us. us. Beloved in Christ, when we are lost, follow you God is seeking us, always giving us one more chance always gathering us into the people of God. Let us rejoice in God's mercy. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and we sing together. We pray together, God who loves us with tenderness. In the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all people into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus. Amen. From the 13th chapter of Luke. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, 
I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day, I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. Today, tomorrow, and the next day. This is the theme chosen by the Mount Olivet staff to guide us through our season of Lent. The word today speaks to the moment we're in right now as individuals, as a community, as a nation, as a world. And with tomorrow and the next day, we are twice called to look forward in faith and trust and paired with the beautiful logo of the plant and its branches. This theme communicates how God's dynamic word lives in our changing world and is present and active in our lives every day. I attended this week's Coming to Ourselves Bible Study gathering with Pastor Kristen and some members of our Mount Olivet community. Noon on Wednesdays, if you want to join this week. I wanted some guidance on how to approach this odd text. And the group advised, give us the context and connect the dots. Help us understand how it applies to our lives. So I'll do my best. Today, the reading begins with a warning from the Pharisees to Jesus. Get away from here for Herod wants to kill you. And we don't know if the Pharisees want to protect Jesus or to entrap him with this statement. They have been irritated and offended by Jesus' ministry so far. His healings, his teaching, parables, and miracles have violated their standards on how to properly follow God's law. It's a plausible threat that Herod would want to kill Jesus. He has already killed John the Baptist. But despite this likely danger, Jesus dismisses the threat and indicates no change in plans. Jesus says, listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. Jesus is too busy doing God's work to be stalled out. The text study group agreed that it sounded like Jesus was saying, listen, Herod, I don't have time right now for you to kill me. Jesus then insults Herod by calling him a fox. A powerful leader would want to be compared to a strong image like a lion, not to a crafty nuisance like a fox. So that comment likely bruises Herod's ego. In the today we live in, I can't help but think about how the egos of powerful leaders are easily offended and are driven to do almost anything to prove their strength. And isn't that what we are seeing happening in Ukraine? Every day on the news, heartbreaking images. Defenseless people are targeted, hurt, and killed. Homes and businesses and land destroyed. I feel so irritated by the arrogance, so angry at the injustice, so saddened by the grief and loss. And even these many miles away, I feel afraid of what might happen next, how many layers of this conflict that the invasion reveals and sets off. I worry about ways that we are complicit without even knowing it. And I worry that feeling helpless might make us not step up to help. 
One way to respond is, as Jesus does here, to resolutely stay focused on today, on the call to do the work of God. In our today, in our lives, our experiences, in our families, what does it look like to follow Jesus' example, to keep focused on the call to love and to serve? Tomorrow. How do we move from a frightening today to a hopeful tomorrow? In the reading, Jesus laments over Jerusalem with deep compassion. Lament, whether we hear it in the Psalms or from Job or from our own hearts. It is fueled by the desire for mercy, for change, for relief. To bother to cry out in protest, one must have hope. And I feel hope in the way Jesus shows us this beautiful imagery of God. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. In scripture, masculine imagery for God is common. Father, King, Lord... But here, Jesus uses feminine, mothering imagery. She gathers, shelters, gives a hiding place, protects. How could we not find hope in knowing that God loves us like that? We also know that motherly love is fierce. I don't want to get between a hen and her chicks any more than I want to get between a bear and her cub. This image brings both sides of love and loyalty. And we see the wings outstretched and sacrificial and sheltering and protecting. But she's watching. She's ready. We know if that hen senses a threat to the chicks that she enfolds, she will protect those whom she calls her own with fierce, unyielding, unconditional love. We build strength for tomorrow on such trust and hope. Following Jesus' example here means doing what we can to provide unconditional, sheltering protection to those who need it. The next day. In this text, Jesus calls us not once to trust, but twice. When I look for the and the next day promise, In this text, I jump to the last verse. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Those in Jesus' audience that day would probably have recognized this verse from Psalm 118. And it will be declared to Jesus as he enters Jerusalem and is showered with palm branches. It is a simple confession of faith. And we can live that out in our everyday lives. Many in our world are in great need right now, and many are in positions to help. Martin Luther bids us to be little Christs to our neighbor, and we can do that. That is the next day of this text, that we not only recognize Christ as the one who comes in the name of the Lord, but that we can be one who comes who acts, who responds, who loves, and who serves in the name of the Lord. Of course, the extreme situation in Ukraine is an immediate need. Not knowing where to start, I visited the ELCA disaster response page as one trusted way for me to share from my abundance. Perhaps you know other avenues, resources, and efforts. Tell others. Together, we can make a tremendous difference in God's name. Overwhelming crises remind us of our interconnectedness, of the needs not only far away, but right here. In this very room, there is both great need and great abundance. On your street, in your workplace, in your schools, the city, Kid Pack needs your help so that we can provide for children and families. The meal served here every week 
is the way that we define ourselves as servants, as helpers and sustainers of God's love to our neighbors. God creates us to be in community, to give all a place at the table, to provide shelter and space, to share wisdom, and to live together in God's grace. That is how we can be blessed and how we can be a blessing. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, to the cross, to the resurrection. We take similar steps of faith, putting one foot in front of the other in trust. We love and are loved today. We will love and be loved tomorrow. We will love and be loved the next day. Thanks be to God. Amen.
creators of justice and joy and peace. And now we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we share the peace and collect the offering, um, in this emerging life post-COVID, uh, we're looking at an innovative way to do the offering. Uh, we just don't have the ushers, um, and everyone gives in such a different way to pass the baskets really um, is not working. And so uh, we are now instilling a new process. Kids, your basket is up here. We're going to have another um, basket for offering. Um, if you have your envelope here, feel free to come up as we share the piece and as the music comes for the offering to put your offering in there. Um, a reminder, like 65% of our community gives online, but that's happening automatically. And also, um, for those online and also in here, Facebook has a donate button and 100% of those proceeds go directly to the church. So uh, just a way <clears throat> to equip and inform us and in all these things as we kind of live into uh, a new way of doing things. And so if you're online, I invite you to share the peace in the comments and we join with you in that extension of peace, even online. And for those of us uh, who are, are here at church, just a marvelous opportunity uh, for you to look around and see who your community is. If you're visiting today, the warmest of welcomes. Um, I hope you get a glimpse of who we are at Mount Olivet um, through our worship experience. And so now may the peace of God be with you all. Uh, we both share and receive peace from each other.
have to say, wow, amazing. Blake, Karen, Rachel, choir, Pastor Kristen singing in choir too. Okay. All right, we pray together. God of the wilderness, we give you these offerings in gratitude, rejoicing in the abundance of your gifts to us. We give these offerings in faith, trusting that you will provide for our needs. We give you these offerings in hope, knowing you can use them to spread your love in this world. With these offerings, we give ourselves. May we live with generous hearts and open hands. Amen. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered now um, into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from thy kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today, tomorrow, and the next day, God promises to shelter us in the shadow of her wings. In the midst of the ups and downs of our daily lives, 
and in the midst of a broken world. And here at this table, we are reminded of this. At this table, we return week after week to taste the goodness of God and to be nourished with what we need to stay focused and to do the work of God, to do the work of loving in the world. So come with open hearts and open hands to receive this gift of God's abundance. For those of you online, hear these words. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. For those of you here in person, ushers will guide you forward. All wafers are gluten-free. Wine in the cups is dark in color and juice is light. Come to the table for all is ready.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us continue with our post-communion blessing. Blessed Jesus, Mary anointed your feet with oil, loving you into your future. Now you have fed us with your body, the bread of life, loving us into our future with your life-giving hope for a world in need. Amen. Well, now we enter into a time of community prayer where we pray for um, all that's going on in the world, our community, the church, all that is happening in our lives. Um, I will begin with a prayer, um, and then I invite those of you online to um, post your prayers uh, in the chat, and I will also invite those of you um, in the pews to raise your prayers as well. So let us pray. Holy God, in your word today, we hear that you gather us into you, like a hen seeks her chicks, that you offer, offer us safety and warmth under the cover of your strong wings. But oh, how you do weep over our sins and our pride. Oh, how you weep over the world's sins and the world's pride. Shelter all the men and women and children in the world who need your immediate protection on this day. Overtake those in positions of power with your goodness and your compassion and your wisdom. And overwhelm us to, to move out of our own selves and our own lives to care for those in our community and world who need us the most. Lord, in your mercy. So what do we pray today, dear church? Nancy is, um, offers a prayer for her sister Kathy, who is recovering from neck surgery. Um, for all the um, discomfort, that, that just sounds so difficult, um, for, um, for Kathy to receive um, great care, um, for her to um, have all the support she needs to heal, um, for her to have patience um, as she recovers. Uh, Lord, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Other prayers? Yes, Barb. Barb has a prayer for Ukraine, um, and specifically that God would just overtake Putin, um, those who are in positions of power, um, and put a halt to these senseless bombings of uh, buildings, of civilians, of maternity wards. Um, God, we just, we we remember our, our neighbors who are in, in these countries, in Ukraine, in other areas of the world where there's civil unrest, where there's violence, um, including places we have forgotten um, because they're not on the headlines anymore. Um, so we just pray uh, along with Barb for healing, for hope, for strength um, for these neighbors. Um, and we just pray God, that you would overwhelm leaders um, to work to resolve their conflicts, to reconcile em enemies, to forge relationships based on justice and respect for human life. God, in your mercy, hear your prayer. Yes.
and um who Megan okay Kathy prays for um, one of our fellow members, Mary, who is recovering from COVID and long-term pneumonia. Um, for Kathy, for all the long-term effects of these um, viruses, um, we pray for Kathy's patience um, in her recovery. We, we pray that day by day, step by step, she will... Um, get better and God we just we just um, pray for all of those people who have long-term effects of this virus that we we don't totally understand um, what the effects are and so we pray um, that all will um, that more will be known and that um, care will be provided Lord in your mercy hear our prayer Yes, Bob. Gracious God, uh, we pray for Bob Swanson's son michael for the life that he led um, for the joy that he brought to so many for the meaning that that very deep meaning of all of his days that he walked on this earth and god we just um we reach out now in remembrance of michael um but also to pray for those who struggle with mental illness um, God, we know that you, what you care about is that all would live a life of abundance. And so we ask that you would bless those today that are struggling with mental illness and give them a sense of your peace and of um, life in you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. move to online I'm slowly getting this prayer thing down <laughs> let's see well I have a prayer from Pastor Beth a prayer of joy for the amazing musical gifts we received in worship this morning um, from the choir, from, uh, from our um, organist this morning, Blake, Karen, and Rachel, individually and collectively, a prayer of gratitude. Um, music is life. Um, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, Mark Schmidt has a prayer. Thank you, Mark. A prayer for safety for my friend Natalia as she goes to work as an interpreter with refugees coming from Ukraine into Berlin. Mark, thank you for that prayer. Um, we pray for Natalia. Um, we pray for the uncertainty that might be involved with that. We pray for her um, comfort and her safety and her ability to connect with people who need her. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you all um, for your prayers this morning. God, we raise up these prayers to you. Um, these prayers and the other prayers that are not spoken, but are yet on our hearts um, in all, all in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, um, the next thing today is a blessing for our fifth and sixth grade milestone um, members. Are there any fifth and sixth graders and their families here this morning? Oh, I see Izzy. Who's Izzy? <laughs> Izzy, will you come on up, please? And and your and your father too. I have a blessing for you. What did you do today? Izzy was your usher. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, last weekend, Izzy showed up for a retreat to learn about all the different ways that we, we serve one another in worship, serving communion and being an acolyte, being a greeter and an usher, and reading scripture out loud. Um, and so we are offering a new milestone here at Mount Olivet, which is about inviting you into the full participation in all the ways that we serve together in community. And now I invite the congregation to join me in a special blessing for you. May you find joyful belonging at the heart of this community of faith. May you gather good stories about God so that love has the loudest word when the world says otherwise. May your whole self, Izzy, be honored and loved in this place according to the promises we spoke over you in baptism. May you find purpose in serving others inside and outside the walls of this church. For we need your gifts, your talents, and your laughter. May you dream boldly, but find your way home whenever you need to know who and whose you are. Amen. Thank you, Izzy. And now, announcements. Um, it is your last chance today to participate in these listening and imagining sessions for children's ministry. There is one um, session during the MoTalk time in the fireside room, correct? Yes. And then um, there's another one over Zoom tonight. So if you haven't had a chance to do that, just one more plug for that. Um, we, we have a need for extra hands for Kid Pack today. It's also a competing um, thing, but if you can show up at 10 um, to do that or you have an interest in that, please do. Um, we are um, starting some community book reads for the next three uh, Sundays. These will be in our MoTalk um, times in the fireside room. These are children's book reads, and they're beautiful books. Um, and so we're going to read those children's books, and then we're going to discuss um, our community feeding partners. So all of these books have, um, um, have something to do with feeding and food and food ministry. So please show up for that. Um, our, our Mount Olivet Racial Equity Team is hosting a film and book club beginning on March 24th. You can find more in, info on the website. The first session features a Netflix series called High on the Hog, which explores the influence of African American food. And then lastly, um, I wanna tell you all that on Wednesday for our vigil that we had for Ukraine, we raised $700 that will be matched dollar for dollar by Lutheran World Relief. Um, but you are still, a, you are still um, able to donate online at Lutheran World Relief, and they are matching your donations for Ukraine dollar for dollar through the middle of April. So with that, that concludes our announcements. Please rise for our sending hymn. <laughs> Domain, the heart of God. 
join our hearts with those who weep, that none may weep alone. And help us bear another's pain as though it were our own. O Christ, create new hearts in us that beat in time with you. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be whole. In the name of the creator, redeemer, and author of life. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. Thank you. 